So in light of the recent atrocity committed by the 22-year-old gunman Jake Davison in Plymouth, I thought I'd do a video all about incels and relationships and being single and advice for these sorts of men who can't really ever seem to get a relationship or who can't ever seem to get laid or whatever and they remain perpetually virgins by one quirk of fate or another and end up doing uh, disgusting things like murdering five people in cities in the southwest of England. So <clears throat> it's I, the thing is, about this is that I know that for men there's such a huge amount of pressure on us to get into a relationship and to get laid and everything else like this and we're not seen as proper men unless we're able to do these things and we're not seen as well we're seen as like low life scum almost if you can't get a girl if you can't be in a relationship with someone you're considered like a weird creepy outcast creature by both men and women by the way i think and i think Firstly, what I'd like to do in this video is to extol the virtues and the joys of being single. And, you know, really, if you want, which, by the way, leads into actually how to get a girlfriend in, in, the, in the later stages of this video. I'll sort of try and get into that um, and how it relates to that process. Um, if you want anyone to be in a relationship with you, just to briefly digress on this point, if you want anyone to be in a relationship with you, first of all, you have to be comfortable with yourself and you have to be comfortable living a single life and you have your life has to be in order before anyone before you can expect anyone to really sleep with you or be in a relationship with you because the thing about relationships is that yes they are all about having children ultimately so um you need to have your, your shit together to be in a relationship and if yeah only relationships needn't be about having children obviously but in most cases they are and in the minds of most women, yeah, they don't want a man who's a slob or who, you know, has a crummy, shitty little apartment like I do or anything like that. And they want like, a secure environment with, in which to raise children. And yes, having money is part of that. Yes, being successful is part of that. Yes, being confident, hence, I think, is part of that also. And usually things like looks and height go along with this sort of thing also. And yeah, too often men find themselves sort of um, it marginalised in the dating pool because they lack these traits, they lack these qualities. So, and the, the end product of that is that you have um, vulnerable, lonely loser, schlubby, uneducated men without that many prospects in life also, like Jake Davison, going around killing people with pump-action shotguns in Plymouth. That's the, this would be the end result of that process. However, there's all sorts of other things to take into account. It's not just the fact that they can't get laid or so, but the not getting laid bit, the not getting relationship bit is part of it, since... If you lower someone's socioeconomic circumstances, like we have in this country under the Tory government, um, to such a great extent that they seem to lack all future prospects, and it, they seem to lack any way of making it in the world, uh, and hence any way of getting a relationship, then this is the sort of thing that you end up with. You end up with people going mad with shotguns, shotguns on the streets of Plymouth. And it is a multifaceted problem. It's not men's blame. It's not really women's. It's not women's blame at all. Um, or it's not women to blame. Not in any direct sense. It's well, I suppose you could say it's the government to blame. <laughs> or is it? It was the socio-economic circumstances created by the government. To some extent, it is that possibly, but I think it's everyone to blame really for it. I think we, we have to collectively own our share of the social responsibility inherent in creating these sorts of people. And I think, well, yeah, women, are they to blame really though for it? 
honestly though, if he had sex one time with one woman, one woman just came over to him and wanted to have sex with him. Yeah, he he probably wouldn't have done that. That's the horrible thing about all this. That's the horrible thing to have to sort of say. Um, you know, the, the problem I think is we need to be having sex with one another more. We need to revivify the culture of casual sex so that this sort of thing doesn't happen. Because due to the internet and so on, this is the real problem, I think. Due to the internet and so on, and online dating and dating apps and this sort of stuff, and how superficial it's become, and how focused on looks it's become, it's, you know, you swipe right just because you don't like the look of someone. It's, it's killing human social interaction. It is, it's, yeah, it's destroying people's lives. And it's making people into this, these Jake Davidson characters, you know, who feel like they're, they're being run down, their lives are being degraded, they're just being ground down into the dirt by life and so on, at the age of 20 fucking two years old, where there ought to be no social pressure on anyone to have a girlfriend. And to bring this back to my original point, the joys of being single and so on, yeah, the single are stigmatised in the world they're stigmatized in society and that is the fault of every single one of you male female or otherwise you know what i mean yeah and i love being single i love being single because it means i get to do what the fuck i want with my life i don't have to get dragged around shops and do all the things that women like doing i don't have to say that you look good in that and so on and so forth when you fucking don't or the, the expensive dress you bought makes absolutely no difference whatsoever to how you look. <laughs> and so on and so forth, and all this bullshit. <clears throat> and the ideal sort of girlfriend I'd like, I'd like any kind of girlfriend, would just be... Well, one who I do enjoy doing stuff with, and one who we... where we enjoy doing similar sorts of things together. You know, nice long walks in the country, going to the pub, and where she doesn't mind me taking quite a lot of time out of life, the, the life of doing stuff together to, for instance, write books and perform stand-up comedy, and someone who likes me for me, but I doubt that I'll probably get, I probably won't get a girlfriend, let's face it, until I become successful in some way. And I do appreciate that. Because who the hell wants to go out with a struggling writer or a struggling stand-up comic? Not many people, that's who. <laughs> so, yeah, but, but single life is fantastic. It's great. It's fantastic. It really is. You you can go out and meet your friends as often as you like. You're not encumbered with respon the responsibilities that go along with the relationship. You can, you're free to be a bit naughtier. You're free to, for instance, get drunk a little more often than you might otherwise. As I said, hang out with friends and doing what I do, which is working on crap like this. Sergeant Arson. This is crap. This is the first edition. Well, it's not crap. It's just rough around the edges and there's typos in it and things like that. But other than that, I think it's pretty funny and cool and whatnot. <sighs> and it's about a great big fat crop police officer called Frank Carson. He's my favourite character by the way, Frank Um And yes, and you're f you are more free as a single person to do what you want. However, in a relationship, you do get more stability uh, in all sorts of ways, I think. You get more like financial stability. You can rely on someone else for financial help if that's an issue for you. You've got someone there constantly for emotional support and from the maleness within us we get to have sex with someone routinely um, at least in an ideal relationship um, and that takes care of that human need so it's yeah there's, there's positives and negatives to both relationships and well single but I tend to say there's actually not that many negatives to singledom. Because if you're single, you should be fucking elated. You should be fucking grateful that you're single. 
that you don't have you don't have this woman or this man around all the time, constantly either like pestering you for something or for sex or for whatever. And you should be really happy if you're single. It's probably the best. I and also I'm I have Asperger's syndrome. I'm ninety nine percent convinced I have Asperger's syndrome, which means that I love my alone time. I love my quiet time, and I couldn't really live without those things. I couldn't really live without solitude, and I need that. And I think that's also part of like the artistic side of myself, and also things like time for reading and so on and so forth. I need that. So the part of the need to read and appreciate that I need to read also to digress a little bit. And the more and more I think about having a relationship, the more and more I think that it throws up problems and it's a difficult thing to have to try and live one's life around someone else, if you know what I mean, and their requirements and their needs. Because I, I don't want to give too much of a rat's ass about that sort of stuff and just be free and single. You know, that's a phrase, isn't it? Free and single. Free to do what the hell you like. And all these people, these incel people, are failing to appreciate this. And they're just bent double with the pressure put on them by society, i.e. by you lot, other people. Yeah to get in a relationship and to shackle themselves to someone else at the earliest opportunity, have a bleating, mewling, puking little child with with one of them that they need to pay for and put through the education system and get healthcare for them and look after them into adulthood, try not to fuck up their heads too much and so on and buy presents for for Christmas and birthdays, buy food for, and do all the other things that make it stop fucking crying for a second. And when it comes to the terrors of life, I think that is the great terror, is it not? Reproduction. I, I'm not... When it comes to myself, I'm not 100% convinced I really want to reproduce at all. I don't think we need any more people for one thing, the planet is overpopulated. The comedian Doug Stanhope, my favourite comedian, makes um, a pretty robust point on this matter. Like, yeah, abortion is green. Uh, and what is it? Something is eco friendly and abortions are green? Yes, yeah, sodomy is eco friendly and abortions are green. Exactly. Like, you can't. There's not so many ways of arguing around that point either you say yeah but we just have one child and, but then we need to have another one to ensure that the first one isn't a weird only child that's the one you get all this crap and also i'm getting to the age now because i'm 28 now and i've never had a girlfriend i've had the opportunity i think to have a girlfriend at a couple of points but i've never actually had one and I think the reason why I haven't had one yet is actually because I'm terrified of commitment and I'm secretly terrified of reproduction and I'm terrified of spawning a child and I'm terrified of conversations like oh I had a pregnancy scare or oh, what are you going to keep it or not and what if they say yeah I am going to keep it like, well that's my life over isn't it <laughs> so yeah like I I don't know. I and I've always thought, yeah, I've got a wife and children. One day, one day, one day, just keep filling it up. But then it's like, oh, you need to have a relationship now. Yeah. And all the cool people getting married. And like, I'm getting to the age now where people are starting to get married. That I know there's been like one, two, three weddings of people I've known in lockdown. I don't know like why they're having weddings in lockdown. I have it like they think it's the end of the world or something, they need to get hitched now and declare their love to one another because it's like what? They won't get another opportunity. Or do they secretly not want to invite everyone to the wedding? <laughs> is that it? And what we don't get, the only bit about weddings that's any fun, which is the reception. We don't get the we don't get the speeches from the best men. The 
best, the best man speeches, and we don't get the opportunity for drinky drink and dancing. <laughs> Way to have a wedding. <laughs> what a pointless, stupid wedding if you're not going to allow people to dance and drink. And like, all these in- involuntary celibate. Think about how stupid that name is. Involuntary celibate. Think about the, like, how, quite how stupid it is. Involuntary celibate? You can't be involuntary, involuntarily celibate. Celibacy in, refers to the state of not being married and not having sexual relations. It's not or, it's and. So, because marriage, in the traditional sense at least, entail sexual relationships since you need to consummate the marriage but celibacy is the total abstention from all sex acts and marriage so that yeah you can only be involuntary celibate if you really are hogtied in someone's basement with a cock cage on you and you can't touch yourself at all down down there and you can't perform any sex acts on yourself so if you can masturbate, if you have the ability to masturbate, you're in a position where you couldn't be invol- involuntarily celibate. You can only be celibate. <laughs> and these people go around and like, yeah, they're misogynists. Yeah, they hate women. And it's the misogyny that's just been building up and building up in their minds. And this happens to loads and loads of men, by the way, whether they're in relationships or not. And by the way, a lot of men who are perfectly capable of getting laid and getting in relationships because of their good looks uh, or their ability to sort of finagle relationships by chatting up girls and so on, have the confidence and the ability to do that sort of thing. Um, a lot of them, they are misogynistic as fuck and they just pretend that they're Anyway, the, the misogyny builds up and builds up in their mind. The hatred of women builds up in their mind. And, um, yeah, they turn into angry little commentators on corners of the internet and start making arguments like, no, it's so unfair that I can't get a girlfriend. And all this sort of thing. And, yeah, incel the produce that way. But then again, like... I'm tempted to say also that the incel phenomenon is a phenomenon that's arisen as a reaction to third wave feminism and a reaction to feminazism and feminism being taken far too seriously and a reaction to radical feminists. And I think there's probably a good argument to be levelled for that general point and hence the likes of Jake Davison can actually be explained as, as a byproduct of feminism more than anything else. Since I think I associate incels with the old right, that's my inclination to do that. And by the way, I'm, I'm not advocating a position, I'm not supporting either side in this. I don't support the feminazis, obviously. I don't support the incels and the old right. I wouldn't consider myself all right or an incel, since I consider an incel to be a ridiculous thing to call myself. But it's... Yeah, it, it's a phenomenon, and they're both as bad as each other. Both of them. They just need their heads knocking together, and ideally to be shackled into relationships with one another, because that would cure everything. <laughs> <coughs> but gather up all the worst feminists, gather up all the incels, this is the solution, and put them in a room together until they start fucking. That would work, I think. I submit that would work. Yes. And, yeah, eventually they would start doing the old... And with a bit of luck, and the problem would be sorted that way. But, yeah, um, so this video is all about why... Relationships, I think, actually suck more than likely. And the more that I've introspected and thought about the people I love and actually being in a relationship with them, the more I've come to suspect that we probably get bored of one another pretty quickly. And 
I don't know. Or that I'd get cheated on or something like that horrible would happen like that and then I've been single is a lot of fun. It really is. It's a great thing. You can have a laugh with your mates, you can do this, that and the other. You can do basically everything you can do in a relationship, except the things you can't do in relationships. And you can of course still have casual sex with people. Which I think might be like one of the great booms of life, you know? A little bit of casual sex here, there, and everywhere. And unfortunately, I'm the sort of person who does fall in love routinely. I'm the sort of person who also, for various reasons, hasn't had that love requited. It's always been unrequited love. I've always been rejected by the people I've loved. And, um, but I'm not bitter about it because I genuinely love those people. It's just you know, the quirks of fate and the quirks of their own heart that they don't feel the same. Which I just think is a shame, really. I don't consider it any failing on their part because I think if you love someone genuinely, you... It, it doesn't matter at all if they don't... if they reject you because you just want the best for them and they clearly don't think that you're the best thing for them. So they reject you, and you sort of go, oh well, I understand. Or you sort of do that to the best of your ability, and then move on with your life. Which is sort of what I've had to do on a routine basis. <laughs> or since I was at school anyway, and I sort of sent a very long, probably torturously badly written love Facebook message to a girl I was in love with, and she thought it was really creepy and horrible. <laughs> And she rejected me for that. So there. Um, but, yeah, I mean, when it comes to the, the incel brigade, they can't get laid, can't get relationships, hence. Um, lonely, desperate, uh, probably not all that financially secure. Probably not all that well educated. Um, I think women can tolerate poverty in men to a greater extent if they have learning about them. If you see what I mean, if they are sort of degree educated, but in that case they're not like as likely to be poor. But I think if you're if you've got a PhD and you're a sort of researcher, and I know those people don't earn a hell of a lot of money, then I think you're more likely to get a girlfriend because of your your acumen. But yeah, I mean, unpublished writers and unpaid samba comics, they have very little time for. But one of the benefits of being single, the main benefit of being single actually is I can work on all those things to my heart's content. And I don't, I'm actually, and I've written three books now, one novel, one novella, one short work of non-fiction. I'm working on a hell of a lot more than that, like seven books in total. So I've got I've got my, my plate full. And I'm hopefully gonna get published one day. Hopefully I'll get published one. Strictly speaking, I am already published since I started the publishing company to publish my own work. But yeah, hopefully I'll get published one day. Hopefully I'll be financially secure in the future. Hopefully, hopefully. But it's, and, and I don't mind when I have a relationship. I've read SEO Trot. I've known, you know, the Mr. What's His Name and Mrs. Silver. He's been single his entire life and gets in a relationship when he's an old man. That's a beautiful story. That's a really, really nice story, isn't it? SEO Trot by Roald Dahl. It's, it shows you that you needn't sacrifice your youth for the sake of one other person and for the raising of children and for marriage and this, that and the other. And also being in a relationship, it's a precarious place to put yourself in. Because suddenly you're, there's an association with risk there. 
there's risk of the relationship ending and it all terminating. And, you know, you need to go back to square one, to single them, when you probably didn't really figure out how to be single and live well to begin with. And, like, I think that's the best challenge and the biggest challenge. How to be an independent man. How to be, you know, a, a bachelor, basically. How to live like a bachelor, live as a bachelor well. I think that's the real challenge. And because if you're in a relationship, you've got a lady friend to do all the washing up and cooking and cleaning and so on and so forth, and you do your share, and da, 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 you've got division of labour, and suddenly you're doing about 50% of the work you're doing beforehand. And frankly, it's, yeah, it's you just, you hired a servant, basically. Whereas if you're single, you've got to do fucking everything for yourself, which is really good, in my opinion, because I... I cook for myself, I clean for myself, I pay my rent for myself, I do my bills for myself, I do my taxes, I, I run a company, I write, I perform stand-up comedy, I work full-time. Also, I mean, yeah, my life is full of never-ending toil, but I enjoy that. I enjoy living a busy and productive life. It makes me feel very, very satisfied. And the very last thing I actually have any time for is a relationship. Other than more reasonable relationships like friendships. Where I can go off and see a friend and have drinks with them and so on. And chat. I don't have to have someone living with me who's constantly talking at me and trying to get me to do stuff. But they want me to do. But I don't. So this has been my cavalcade, my cavalcade of why singledom is brilliant and why being in a relationship sucks dick. And also, being in a relationship is such a conformist thing to do, isn't it? The sense I get about the incels is that they're natural non-conformists, more more like they're sort of like in a, in a bohemian sect of life. Very much like the sort of the anarcho feminists who they counterpose. <laughs> um, but that they fail to adequately but they're they're just or that they ought to be non-conformists, but they're being little conformists by wanting what everyone else wants, which is a fucking girlfriend. You know? It is, it's so like that. It's they're just they're just conforms little shit weasels. They want the same thing that everyone else wants. And they you never know. Your life could be like a million times better than everyone else's. If you follow more of a non-conformist path. Instead of like sitting around worrying about like whether or not you're gonna get laid or have a girlfriend in the future, why don't you start trying to do something about getting laid and getting a girlfriend? taking steps towards success. And I think this is finishing off my final, my, the point that I sort of didn't even finish off. Like try writing books, try making music, try performing stand-up comedy, try making films, try making, try writing poems. If you can suck any money out of poetry, try getting published as a writer, as a journalist, as this, that, the other. Try acting if that's, your flavour, or just do something to try and gain success. Try starting a business. Try that, you know. Have a big new idea, or do something that someone else has done before, only do it better. And those are basically the two different avenues you can go down for success. Um, yeah, just do that stuff. And stop worrying about whether or not you're getting laid or going to get a girlfriend in the future. Focus on yourself and your own life and focus on living a damned good life as a single man. And then uh, eventually like you'll, you'll, you'll discover that opportunities pop up and the lady shows up who's interested or seems interested because she likes the cut of your jib. And she likes... The, the fact that you give off an aura of 
pleasantness and possibly naughtiness a little. <laughs> and also you have the aura of someone who is at least committed to trying to attain success. If not actually successful. And then I think you're more likely to get laid because then it looks as though you have potential. And you never know, you might actually have potential to go along with it. So what's what's to lose, really, by doing that? And just by trying to live the best life that you can lead, rather than worrying endlessly about what other people think about you and worrying endlessly about the stigmas the society places on the single man which they always have done. Oh, they always have. They're the worst at it. No one, no one likes the single man. He's always the scary man who lives alone and all this sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. When, you know, the truth is that single men yeah, it comes across as a, a sort of like a tragic figure. But, or ch and childless couples, they also get thrown into the mix by people with children, which is most couples, I think, or most, yeah, couples have children associated with them. Or most couples over the age of 25 do, um, I think. And, you know, the childless couple, they're sort of looked down on, sneered at, because they're secretly envious of them, that's why. And, you know, don't conform, don't do that. Live the bohemian life, which is the single life, by the way. The life of being in a relationship is not the bohemian life. That is very much the conventional life. And if you're going to live a sort of um, a Brahmin life, which is more like bohemian, priestly caste life, then you can't be in a relationship. Because then, cause to be in a relationship, that's Vana Prashta, which is like the householder life the life of the man with the household, and so on. So to, you know, be the, the great scholar, or whatever it is, or the great writer and artist, or the great person who's more associated with monastic life, you know, the life of the school, the monastery, you need to not be in a relationship. Because only then do you have the time on your hands to perfect things like poetry, music, drama, literature, and the, the new incarnations that we have of these ancient practices such as stand-up comedy, which is more like the ancient practice of poetic rhetoric, I think. To, to briefly digress, you know, if you read Ovid's Metamorphoses, all of those poems, but that poem would have been designed to be read aloud and it really, really has the structure of stand-up bits in it. So effectively what Ovid's Metamorphosis is, is a series of stand-up comedy routines written down on paper, I think. But anyway, affecting all that stuff, yeah, it takes not being in a relationship very often or it can be negotiated while being in a relationship. Although you must be very, very organized, I think, to be able to do so. And the best way of getting organized and being able to do that is by first of all doing it as a single person. And then once you can demonstrate that you're organized enough to um, at least fail in a way that's consistent and good. And I think this is a consistent and good failure of a self-published novel. Yeah, if you, can, if you can continue to fall gracefully, I think you're likely to get into a relationship then. Um, if you can gain success, then you're very likely to get laid and be in a relationship. <laughs> or, you know, well, you needn't be a writery, artsy type. You needn't be any of that. You just need to have fulfilling work and to be a fulfilled person. But the work part is crucial because that entails money. 
and you, you need this if you want a relation if you want a relationship because in a relationship usually the other party wants children usually unless you're fortunate enough to find one that doesn't and I was at one point I was in love with her I completely bollocked it up but that is another point, another story for another day. <laughs> so no, if you can possibly help it, don't be like Jake Davison, 22-year-old serial murderer now, uh, and blowing your own head off with a shotgun after having killed, I don't know, having killed five people, including a kid. And however, you can also be part of the solution to that. By stop sneering at the single, stop sneering at incels and so on and so forth, and stop thinking you're something better than them because you got lucky a few times and got laid or something. And also, yeah, I got lucky a couple of times and got laid as well. I'm not a virgin. It's probably why I'm not a Jake Davison character or an incel. I know that sex is actually pretty disappointing. And that is a topic for yet another video. This could go on endlessly. So it's. Yeah, to summarise, it's not worth worrying about if you're single, if you're not just a maid, it really isn't. <laughs> and I know that this won't get liked or shared nearly enough to convince any incels of that, or to convince any virgin among men of this, um, this pitiful fact of life, that sex... Is not is not what it's cracked up to be. It is. Uh, it can be pitiful. That's the thing about it. It's not like you see in the movies or in porn. And if you think you can do sex like you can in porn, you've probably been watching too much of it. Um, since those people in in the porn, they are very good at sex because they're porn stars. That seemed to be like their uh, their raison d'etre in life. You're not one of those, are you? And yeah, stop stop sneering on the single, stop putting people down for not being in a relationship. Never don't you dare put down a childless couple ever. And I, I know what you're like. You would do that. Yes, you would. Society. Do something to redress the socio-economic imbalances within society also. Um, fund the arts and the writing and, yeah, fund the arts more so that we can give the bohemian weirdos just a little bit of sustenance to allow them to eke out an existence while, I don't know, uh, make, doing theatre out of Play-Doh characters or something. Like doing the play doh Macbeth in a in a filthy little apartment somewhere in Basel, who knows? Um, and yeah, yes, yes. Um, of course, we should be feel very sorry that these people have died. However, more than that, I feel that we ought to. Uh, attempt to understand what's happened here and attempt to understand the socio-economic forces that have led to this individual committing this atrocious act or these atrocious acts. So, yes, I think it comes about as a result of society's diffidence towards the single and society's and the pressure placed upon men and women in society, hence to be in relationships with one another, whereas we have a huge crisis at the moment, which is overpopulation, which leads into obviously the climate crisis and every other fucking thing associated with that. Whereas we don't need any of that shit. And then the last thing we need is another fucking human being on the planet at the moment. Maybe in like 50 years, once we half the population through controlling reproduction socially as I suggest we ought to then maybe we can think about having a few more all right
But from now on, we need to get the population into decline, get ourselves down to about 3 billion or so globally, I think, which involves less of that or more of <laughs> that and then that. Yeah? So I'm children to like show them off because of like accessories or something and stop fucking without protection. And yeah, if you're if a man get your tubes tied, if you're a woman get your tubes tied, or get on the, the, the pill or whatever it is, or get the thingy up your thing. The um I don't know what they have now for women. But yeah, men do your bit, women do your bit. Population needs to decline, help the planet. Possibly. I think I've made my point. Thank you very much everyone, bye bye.